There exists a curious legend among the people of South Africa. It was prevalent during the late 19th century colonization of Africa, which saw the constructions of railways across the countryside for the transport of workers. This is the legend of witch trains, ordinary looking trains, but staffed by the debased servants of a powerful being generally thought to be a witch, or sometimes even multiple witches. These trains would appear to people traveling alone at night in the countryside and take them aboard, never to be seen again. This is far from the full extent of what was going on. Although the activity of the witch and her train subsided as of late, there is still one train roaming, still waiting to return to the witch's house. Seeking out this train is difficult and will take some time. The rails themselves are not mapped, so prepare for a rucksack and a long day's journey. On the first or last day of the month, this is the most conducive and it's the most likely to actually have the rails appearing. Travel by any means to the town of Karisburg in South Africa. When the sun has gone down, begin walking in any direction between the north and northeast of town. It may be advisable to prepare some sort of self-protective gear just for traveling in South Africa, but please note that any protective gear you have will be worthless against what you will actually encounter down the road. Keep walking until you find a railroad track. Inspect it carefully to ensure that it is not merely an ordinary track. The track you are looking for will be in excellent condition and if you look closely, the ground beneath the track will be completely undisturbed. There should be no difference between the ground beneath the track and the nearby uncovered ground. Walk in either direction along the track. It should take no longer than an hour or so for you to reach your destination. In the stark contrast of the track, the station is hovel. You will find a few small buildings completely deserted, and all but one have been burnt to the ground. The one that remains standing is blackened. It's a rickety wooden shack though a single front door appears to be brand new. A sign nailed to it reads, Staff Only. In the older days, the station would actually have staff. The station hadn't been burned either. The witch trains didn't stop abducting people on their own volition. The train you are looking for will stop here soon. But to make proper use of it, you need something from the staff room. No matter what you try, the door will not open for you. But fortunately, the witch gave no special treatment to the walls. They are badly burned and worn, so a good kicking should provide an entrance. The staff room is completely bare, save for a few equipment closets along the walls. Search them thoroughly. Most will contain generic 19th century mechanical equipment, but one will contain a silver control rod for a gearbox. This control rod will be easy to find. It glows, yet it curiously provides no illumination for anything. No matter how dark the environment is, that is what you need. Take it and wait outside. Now what you have to do is wait however long it takes. Eventually, you will see a decrepit old passenger train trundling to stop in front of you. A train attendant will open the door for you. He will wear an extremely worn and filthy staff uniform. He will stare at you with decidedly vacant eyes for a moment, and you will likely feel a sudden, acute sense of discomfort. You would be right to feel this way. The stare is intense, yet there is no one behind those dull eyes. The man will say one word. Return. The tone will sound odd as a statement, yet there will be the faintest hint of quarry in the sound of it. This is because the man's speech is meant to be a quarry. In the past, this man and his fellow staff would, upon stopping and opening the doors, ask the unfortunate travelers of the South African countryside, single or return. If you answer their attendant with return, you will be taken on the train and ferried a far distance away from the countryside before being brutally beaten by the train staff and thrown off. This is the same for any others who have encountered this train. Any other answer will simply result in him repeating his question until he gets the answer he wants. The other expectant answer you can give is, of course, single. However, fortunately for you, the train and its staff no longer have means to carry out their programmed responses to this answer. This is why that part of the dialogue had been removed from their protocol. If you answer with this, the attendant will simply stare at you and do nothing until you give another response. This is where the control rod comes in. Without saying a word, produce it in his hand. His face will not have a reaction to this, but I can assure you that if he had the remotest capacity for emotion, he would profoundly be relieved to see it. He will silently take the rod and then step off the train to walk briskly over to the conductor's car. When he does this, simply climb aboard the train and close the door. Nobody will hinder you now, and the attendant will not return to this car. It is a standard passenger car with rows of wooden seats along the walls. Everything is thickly coated in dust and worn by centuries of age and neglect. The doors to the other cars, as well as the windows, are boarded up. 
You must spend the whole journey here, but worry not, it is a short trip, and there is nothing you need to see outside the windows anyway. Sit and wait, you will soon feel the train start to move. The journey will be short, however it is unlike any other you've ever taken. The train crosses more than just one land, indeed it crosses more than just space, but let's not dwell on that. You will not feel anything during the transition, nor will you feel anything when the train arrives at the destination. However, it is extremely important that you do not open the door until you are absolutely certain that the train has arrived. The transition is lethal to unprotected human life. To tell if the train has arrived, first wait 10 minutes. This is the longest it will take to enter the transition. Then periodically tap the boarded up window with your finger. A hollow knocking sound will indicate you have arrived. Whereas if the finger produces a dull thud, as if you're tapping against a completely solid object, you have not arrived yet. Step out of the train as soon as you feel you've arrived. As you step off the train, you'll find yourself on a barren, rocky plain, surrounded by a thick mist. Probably the first thing you'll notice is a huge number of rotting human bones scattered across the area. The witch, in its activities on Earth, made a large number of servants. It also made a large number of enemies. The bones that profane the grounds here belong to both camps. The battle that made such a necropolis of this place would also be the reason for the abrupt disappearance of which the trains now reports them. A short distance away, not obscured by the mist, you will see a dilapidated church of white stone. Staying close to the edge of the fog, but being very careful not to lose sight of the church, make your way there. This part is important. You must keep a close eye on the church, for you will soon see a small crowd emerge and start approaching the train. These are more over servants. As soon as you see them, immediately run into the fog, but do not lose sight of the church. This place is not a natural part of our world, and consequently, the geometry of the land is abnormal. If you proceed in what may seem like a straight line for too far into the fog, reversing your direction will not take you back to the church. Wait in the fog as the servants go past. They all wear the same worn train staff uniforms, and they all wear the same utterly vacant expressions on their faces. Don't let this fool you, though. If they catch you trespassing on her land, they will tear you apart in fanaticism, and they have the strength that no human can match. Once they reach the train, they will stay there. This is the first time it has been here in over a century. Proceed to the church at this point, but stay close to the fog just in case. Approach the white church and take note of the damage. The walls are abdormed in a scorch, marks, and bullet holes. More of the skeletons of the witch's servants and enemies surround the church, and are scattered amongst the floors and aisles. As you will see through the blasted front doors, you won't end up like these skeletons at this point. All of the witch's servants in this place have gone to the train and will stay there, at least for a while. The people who attacked this place made sure to destroy the witch's means of re-entering our world, such as the train and the control rod for activating the transition, so her servants will be hard at work investigating the train. Don't worry. If you do this correctly, you should be able to return back to the train and the control rod before the witch can make use of it once more. Enter the church and proceed through the nave to the doors behind the altar. Muster up your courage and determination here, and perhaps prepare something like a rag to cover your face with. The reports I have on the church do not indicate good ventilation in the next hallway. When you are ready, enter. The dim light of the hallway will illuminate the carpet of a half-decayed corpses across the floor. On the walls you will see sources of these dim lights, small globes wired to distended mouths of rows of mutilated heads attached to this bizarre machinery set on the walls. Unlike the previous areas, most of these bodies belong to her enemies, not her servants, ambushed and slaughtered here quickly. Walk as quickly as you can through the hall, being careful not to trip. You certainly do not want to dwell here. You may notice that a few of the light globes are dark. Consider the bearers of those lights extremely lucky. For the truth is that these light globes are powered by electrical signals in the brains, so indirectly these people are kept alive. Try not to dwell on much of their fates. You should save your mental fortitude for the trials ahead, and don't attempt to turn any more of these lights off. The witch is coming very soon, and if you do not escape, many more people in your world, including you, will end up like this. My information on this place is based on the accounts of the few who attacked it over a century ago and managed to escape. Thus, I can't give you details on what you will find beyond this forsaken hallway, but I know that among the things there you should find a library, a door with the same luminous silver as the control rod with a crucifix, and a pool of blood. Avoid the door for now, and the pool of blood at all costs. Instead, enter the library. Most of the books there are worthless, except for one set. Though these ancient books are pan in Hebrew, 
there is a place marked by a sign in English reading, the Annals of Connexion, of the Thrones of God, or simply, the Annals of Connexion. In layman's terms, this odd phrase refers to telepathy. Before the end of the journey, you, one way or another, will be able to read Hebrew, and many other languages. However, it is advisable that you use your discretion in reading these books. Aside from instruction on the creation and control of servants that the witch uses, these books talk about the precise nature of the origins of the thrones of God, the universe, different deities. It also details the origins of our species. These things are explained in as much detail as the human mind can perceive. It is reported that a majority of those who have read these texts were unable to reconcile themselves, and would suffer insanity and depression, and would often commit suicide. Carefully consider your life and outlook before you read these texts. Other copies of these books were destroyed a long time ago by the witch, as well as others like her. Along with most of the people who had naturally had the telepathic connexion, these people made up a large part of the witch's enemies who attacked here. Take these books and leave now. It will not be long before the witch emerges from her slumber. Yet there is one more sacrifice you must make before you make your great escape. Find the room with the silver crucifix set door. Now, prepare yourself. This will not be pleasant. Open the door. The room is pitch black, but you can clearly see the machinery surrounding the chained, furiously screaming man inside. All of it in the same silver, non-illuminating glow. Try to find something to hold on to as this man, cut off for so long of the forces, forces his mind upon you. Your head will feel like it's being squashed like a balloon. It will feel like years, but it'll only be seconds before it is done. The man will thankfully die from the strain, making him one less person left behind in your conscience. You will want to take a time to process this, as the knowledge and outright changes to your brain will be unimaginable. But you don't have a moment. You must run now. If you pass the pool of blood on your way out, and you notice that it is bubbling, the witch is emerging. Run to the hallway and prepare yourself for the hardest part. This hallway was created for the connected when they attacked this place. All the people who now set inside these walls are subjected to unthinkable horrors before being forced inside their minds by destructions of all five of their senses. But with the connexion, you will, upon entering the hallway, feel all of their ghastly thoughts inside your mind. This is why the witch did this, to weaken the connected at this hallway. As hard as it will be, you must focus yourself on running through this hallway. Once you are out, you will be fine, but you must get out quickly. Get to the train and her servants will be there. As long as she is not nearby, you can now use the connexion to force your will upon them, preventing them from attacking you. But not for long. Quickly enter the conductor's car or the train, and use the control rod the same way to escape the place. If you successfully escape, congratulations. What you do with your newfound talents and books is entirely up to you. As mentioned before, you will have the capacity to read Hebrew as well as plenty of other languages. There are many people who will offer incredible sums of money for the Annals of Connexion, as well as unthinkable gifts, many of which will sicken you with their degradations. Many more will hunt for the Annals of Connexion, as well as simply hunt you for what you are now. Most likely, you are not able to predict what you will do. You will surely be an entirely different person at the end of this journey. So at the very least, you should hope to adapt to your new life quickly before it overwhelms you.